Hello, welcome back to Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. Oh, let's get on into it. From the writings he found at Ichiru Manor, Lur Rin learns of a folklorist who lived on Mount Hikami, and sets out to the unfathomable forest to see if the rumors of the disappearing house are true. Hey, Rin also has outfits. It also costs money. Notably, he seems to have a lot less. Well, let us get going. In the course of their investigation, Rin and Rui learn of Eiji Watara, a folklorist who settled on Mount Hikan. His writings are certain to be a treasure trove of information about the mountain and its peculiar folk. Rin and Rui happen across a videotape that may just indicate the way to Watara's residence. Yuyuhi took her own life, and Rui attempted suicide. The ghost of a shrine maiden appeared on both occasions. Yuyuhi spoke of a black box that she found on uh, found Haruka trapped in. Does the key to all these events lie in the mountain's dark past? A folklore, Keiji Watarai, used to live there. His notes may shed some light on this mystery. The videotape that we found is on the desk. It seems to be related to that folklorist. I should take a look at it. The Veiled House. There's a videotape on and some notes on the desk. They seem related to Mount Tekami. By the way, I have played this game a little, uh, a little bit, but especially after this particular point in the game, I've not actually played past, so everything after this is a mystery to me. I don't remember seeing this house here before. Doesn't look like anyone's lived here for a while. Whoa! <sighs> Part of the floor is missing. A phone! Whoa! <laughs> Let's just move on, shall we? Who's recording us? A box. I've got to go upstairs. I'm on the second floor now.
Clearly this person can't see ghosts. You're here. Huh? Oh. I think I heard something. Apparently she can kind of hear them. written in Rui's handwriting along with the commentary on the video. The diary found at the old inn mentioned a folklorist who lived on Nanikami. I found more information on him, including his name and books on the occult. This folklorist, Keiji Watarai, went to the mountain to... Excuse me? Uh... Went to the mountain due to his obsession with the mysteries of the sect living there. He then went missing, as mentioned in the diary and rumors about what happened to him about uh about. They say that he didn't just die or go missing, but rather he stumbled on something in the mountain. Uh, he stumbled on something the mountain wanted kept hidden, and so his entire house was swallowed up by the mist. This is the origin of the Mount Hikami. Uh, this is the origin of one of Mount Hikami's more recent stories of a haunted house. While the veracity of this is unclear, I looked into a videotape left behind by someone who stumbled across the house. The video is apparently famous in occult circles. I contacted the publisher and received the following response. Dear Rui Kagemiya, Thank you for contacting us. The video you are looking for is no longer in print, but there are some copies in our warehouse. This video prompted a huge amount of feedback from our customers. The tape was found near a river on Mount Ikami. It is unknown who filmed it. There were many sections too damaged by water to be usable, and so we took what was left and edited it together. The master copy of the video was confiscated by the police. They conducted a search of the mountain, but were unable to find who shot the film, or even the house's location. Now that entering the unfathomable forest is prohibitive, we advise you not look at this on your own. Koji Kari Kakimoto, Suigensha uh, Film Division. I believe the building of uh, the I believe the building visible at the start of the video is the Shrine of Dolls. After that, what, uh, we see what seems to be a cave, but it's hard to make anything out. From the large amount of num uh, the large number of books seen in the house, it's likely that it's is. Wow, I'm really having trouble reading today. It's likely that it really is the former home of Keiji Watarai. Too much. Ren speaking. Ren. Kazuya. I've been trying to get in touch with you. I was worried. Listen. About what I said to you before. I'm getting married. What? You are? Yeah. That's... wow. 
Um, congratulations. Uh, and who's the lucky bride? Anyone I know. Ever since I saw her picture. Well, Hmm. It was an awkward exchange. A veiled house. From the Shrine of Dolls into a cave, this may be the same route Yuri took. I should go... I should start by going there. Duke! Rui's Journal 2! These look like notes of Rui's. Maybe you should drop... Oh! Maybe you should drop them. I wonder if it's okay to read this. Mr. Hojo often cries out in his sleep. He won't tell me much, but it seems like he has a recurring dream about a ceremony from his childhood. As a young boy, Mr. Hojo said he spent a summer with relatives at the base at Mount Kagiroi. He's mentioned playing in an uh, old house in a shrine on the mountain at some kind of festival he went to. Mr. Hojo doesn't talk about, the past, uh, about his past much, so what he has told me I remember clearly. Is he dreaming of that ceremony? I went to festivals as a child, but all I remember is having a good time. Doesn't sound like the festival Mr. Hojo dreams about is any fun. He often cries, don't look at me in his sleep. He's always had a hard time with people staring at him. He especially dislikes it when women look at him for too long. He won't even look at Miss Kurosawa or Miss Ko... Kozukata in the eye sometimes. He doesn't have that issue with me, though. Are the women he's dreaming about really that frightening? Uh, doesn't look like there's anything else in here. So, just a note, uh, our androgynous friend in Japanese is not actually referred to as male or female. It's kind of hinted at that she's a girl, but that's about as close as Japanese does, because Japanese actually can get away with not actually referring to a person's gender or sex um, constantly, unlike English. So, obviously, when the English was translated... They don't really do that properly. Mr. Sakaki, he was helping you look for post-mortem photographs, wasn't he? He went missing. I'm just glad to know he's still alive. No, we... We don't know that yet. He's probably dead. Because this is a Fatal Frame game, and, uh... Bad things always happen. Oh, here we are once again at the Shrine of Dolls. He pretty much has the exact same thoughts of Yuri. dolls right at the beginning. That's a sign of some sort. Uh -huh. 
Oh, here we go. Why did we bring Rui with us? They're just gonna wander off and get lost. To me, I'm not <laughs> supposed to talk to the living. <gasps> a man at last. You are a man, are you not? Huh? I'm a girl. Liar. I, I am. I see. In that case, let us play. This is an effigy of you. No, I'll make you into an effigy. <gasps> that? Ruri, where did you go? Why did you bring... Why did you bring Ruri? <laughs> this never goes well when you bring people to these places. Ah, so they're not immediately attacking me. They just ran off into the wall. Hmm. Am I able to get down here right off the bat? Stairs leading underground below the d doll display case. I might be able to reach the wound cavern through here. First, I have to find Rui. Oop, wrong button. Hmm. Is there like a doll falling into it? I don't like that. Not a fan. Shiny. Glinty shiny. There's like just legs here and an arm. Give film. Ooh, type zero film. Nice. Something falling again. That looks like more came from the ceiling, though. Get shiny. Yes. Oh, 
Ah, book. Uh, no. Bad hand. Shrine of Dolls 2. There's a sold notebook lying in the hallway. Maybe it's belonged to a priest who lived here. The children are playing. Sometimes I wake up at night feeling their presence. The following morning dolls that I know I've put away have moved someplace else. The more this happens, the more clearly I hear the sounds of play, the more often I have dreams where I'm among the children playing with them. I can't make out the children clearly, but I think my late daughter is one of them. Last night I felt like I was being watched. I woke to find a white-haired girl staring at me. She said, don't worry, your daughter's playing with the doll you fixed. That, she does beard. His eyes. It's like she could see everything. She even seemed to answer my, the very question that was on my mind. Swish, 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 swish. Kind of surprised that I wasn't attacked out. Just a little bit. Hello, anybody here? Ah, crap. Now I'm gonna start sneezing. That is not really wanted. I'll try to mute as I can for them, but uh can't guarantee I'll be able to do that every time. There are many dolls lined up on the shelves. It looks like they've been arranged by size. Is there a shiny back there? No. I thought I saw a glinty. I guess not, though. Lean child. Are we playing hide and seek? Because if we are, you are really bad at it. There's no Japanese style dresser in the closet. Like a little face. Well, oh, nothing but eyeballs in there.
Bell tried to attack me. Missed. And said, me, me. Me, me, pickle me. Or pickle pee. A number of small dolls are set on the doll stand. Many of them have been damaged. Me, me, pump a rum. Nah, this leads back to this hallway. I don't think we need to be going that way. Be sure everything we're looking for is probably in this area. Try this door. Now, oh, this book at the end of the hallway. This is surely not a trap. Friend of Dolls 4. There's this little notebook lying in the hallway. Maybe it belonged to a priest who lived here. Today's dream was stifling. It was night, and several men carrying burning flames spent a long time exploring the area underneath the main shrine. They carried a huge reliquary underground, burying it where no one would ever find it. That white-haired girl was sleeping inside the box. She was waiting for someone. But it wasn't me. I didn't have what she wanted. At least I felt like I didn't. I remember feeling so incredibly sad when I woke up. Many dolls lined up on the shelves. This room must be where the dolls being offered up were kept. Okay. Ghost child was just like, blit. Barf up note. Give me medicine. <clears throat> Proceed. Well, let's not do that. At least not yet.
Interesting. Is there a door down that way? There's apparently a door behind me. Where does this go? It leads to a doll. Rui! You... you really came for me. You... you alright? Yes. Rui seems to be okay. I have to find the way to the veiled house. Rui said there's an entrance to a cave below the doll display in front of the shrine. What about the note? I feel like I just skipped a step <laughs> by accident. Large doll has a vacant smile. Lean child. Well, there, there we go. Now she's flying. Dare you attack Rui? That's great. So the ghost can attack my buddy on top of possessing them while they offer no real benefit. <laughs> great. Mm-hmm. My token. 
Did you lose it? But our promise. Uh huh. She seems sad. I like how Ren was actually, like, it says dot dot dot, but he was actually like, Ugh. Just like, made an incomprehensible noise. Which seems very well suited to what just happened. <laughs> to the Wound Cavern. Look for a way to the abandoned house. it at all. The girl. She's been waiting too. For the person with her token. Huh? Uh -huh. Nope! <laughs> wow, that hardly took any health. Ren Strunk. Stronger than Ghost Hand. It's a dead end. There's a drop off and the water is flowing down. It looks like something is floating down there. What do you mean it looks like something? It's very clearly a doll. Defog your glasses, Ren. I feel like it would probably be humid down here, and thus his glasses might be a little foggy. The door won't budge. Black box that's in a hollow along the passageway. Finally decorated black wooden box. The lid is shut and I can't get it open. Not that we probably want to. This camera obscura is reacting to it. Is this not the very room we stand in? as a punching bag. It keeps standing in the way. Are you, you going to do anything?
Be gone, witch. Oh, well, you can continue to remember. The ghost dropped something when it disappeared. Looks like an old metal plate. -y. It goes to the door right next to us. The heavy lattice door is locked. An iris flower is engraved on lock. You inserted the iris plate E into the lock. Ren. Yes. It's the failed house. House underground. Is is someone here? Let's go in. Oh. Apparently it's not underground. Yep, Shiny. Type 61 film. Nice. Hmm. Can I get over here? No. Alright. Let's go inside the spoopy house. Hey look, it's the phone. Ooh. Yep, shiny. There's electricity in here? Well, the lights are on too, I guess. Eh? Uh, what? I didn't even get to see that coming. What the hell? Until, like, it was literally too late. Yay, herbal medicine. Murray, mur, mm, murmuring cagey. There are teacups and a tobacco tray on a dusty table. A small set of drawers. That's not what I was trying to look at. They've expanded with moisture and won't open. The old television is switched on. The screen is blurred with static. I can't make anything out. There's a wooden box on top of a low chest of drawers. The hinge is rusted over and will not open. And yet the TV in here is working. Well, I suppose that does work out. 
I did live in a rotting house after all at one point. Ren, you're too late. I, I'm already. Kazuya? I see shiny. Really? Is that him? This is just like I like that picture you were looking at. <laughs> Kazuya. Photo of a bride. It's exactly the same as the picture from the photo album. Did Kazuya come here because of it too? Keiji Waterai heading inside. Alright, where's that other shiny from this position? There it is. Gib shiny! Folklore's Notes 1. There was an old notebook lying on the shelf. Written in a very elegant handwriting. There's a peculiar custom in this country. It varies from region to region, but the root is the same. It is mysterious, yet somehow beautiful. In order to understand it, I traveled across the country before settling on this mountain. The beauty of the morning dew, the palpable heartbreak of the sun setting behind the mountain, and the grave and solemn night that envelops it. On the mountain, water itself is revered. But why? To try and understand this, I have made this mountain my home. Standing in nasty water. Type 90 film. A household altar has been enshrined at the top of the wall. The wood in the room is blackened and gives off an odd smell. I mean, yeah, it's definitely blackened, that's for sure. Door is being held shut by a powerful force. you pointing at ah, this is what it's pointing at oh hi I'm gonna guess you're the person who recorded the video.
Yeah. This is gross. Shiny. Give shiny. Reach for shiny. There are two memorial tablets and a Buddha statue on the altar. door is being held shut by a powerful force. Shiny, yes, yes. Interrupt shiny game. Transfix KG Watarai. Good film. Good, I was running low on that film. Good book. Folklore's Notes 3. It was an old notebook on the bookshelf. It seems to be about post-mortem photography. Post-mortem photography made its way over from the west along with the spread of the camera. In the... When... Photography was still rare. Images of, dis of the deceased helped the surviving family members deal with their grief. Those mortal photographs that still exist in Japan use the same methodology as their Western counterparts, but the significance seemed to differ. These taken here in the Mount Tikami region especially seem to embody in a certain melancholic beauty. I believe these photos were the work of a scientist named Kunihiko Asao. I mean, I don't know about calling a spiritualist scientist. Having researched photos from other areas as well, it seems he was one of uh, he was the one behind many of them. Its surviving records indicate a determination to use photography to capture the soul. Seeing the strange and captivating uh, photographs, I've come to believe he had some degree of success in doing so. An old friend of mine used to call the cameras lonely boxes. I'm not sure if he meant the subject appears trapped alone in this dark box when vo uh, viewed through the viewfinder, or that looking through the viewfinder meant peering out through the dark all alone. Okay. At any rate, I find those words have a certain resonance. Really? Where's really? Really? Okay, really's just stuck. And teleported. Why couldn't you use that sooner? Could have just teleported upstairs to me. Instead of making me come looking for you. It's still not following me up here. Okay, you'll probably teleport behind me whenever I go through this door. Yep! Ghost. I must go. I can't just keep waiting until it's too late. Even if I risk ruin. Grab shiny. Book Lars notes four. There was an old notebook on the bookshelf. It seems to be about the death on the mountain. The waters of this mountain are beautiful. 
a large volume of water flows from a lake at the summit, becoming rivers and waterfalls and enveloping the mountain in mists. Water covers everything. It is the source of this mountain's beauty as well as its sense of mystery. According to the local tradition, Mount Tikami is one where is where one could die a proper death. It long been considered a ritual spot and a subject of much worship, making it a righteous destination for those seeking death. The Mount Hikami sect that uh, oh, the Mount Hikami sect taught that upon dying, people return to the water. Here on the mountain, water is considered a source of the soul. A person's soul is then said to return to the water upon death rather than moving on to an afterlife. Those ready for death would ra uh, would gather at the mountain and return their lives to the water. Next, everything. Look at this scenery. I understand how it became a spiritual place. It's fit for passing from this world. I'm glad I came here. The people on this mountain have a yearning for death. That is to say, they have a yearning for water, yearning for nature, and death are both connected to water. KG's Cassette 2. It was a cassette with a notepad. The label has been left blank. Okie doke. Apparently, I didn't get cassette one. Kitty Water Eye, a KG Water Eye lost in thought. Ugh. Rudy was jiggling behind me. Ah. I could probably stand a uh, Hans Ren's camera. thought that was a th in the lens thing. Oh, he doesn't have lenses, so... Hmm. Okay. Stupid hands. Folklore's Notes 2. There was an old photograph laying, or notebook laying on, uh, on the stack of books. It's written in elegant handwriting. I saw the silhouette of a shrine maiden from within the mist that envelops the mountain. With great care, she made her way slowly up the mountain. Something about her seemed somehow unnatural. 
I've been told there are no more uh, there are no more shrine maidens on the mountain now. Long ago many maidens were murdered here, perhaps they returned to the water. Would they then imply that they are trapped within the mist? Hmm. <clears throat> Folklore's notes fives. Notebook on the desk has no dust on it, as if it was just as it's as if someone was just writing in it. It is said that human sacrifice was once practiced throughout this region. Rather than returning people to the water upon death, the ritual involved placing so-called pillars and special reliquaries and sending them in, sending them to the water while still alive. Why? It was the role of the Shrine Maidens to become such pillars. They would take on the memories of the dying and thereafter return to the water themselves. In doing so, it was believed the subjects would continue living on as pillars. Why? In Japan, there, are, there was once a sect of Buddhist monks who would enter themselves in boxes buried underground for the sake of enlightenment. These monks were said to show they were still alive by ringing bells and chanting. Its practice may be related. That is self-mummification. I actually know what they're talking about in regards to that. But what did the maidens who became pillars fear or hope to appease? The very question of why I'm asking why. There are various teachings in Japan about where the after, uh... Where the afterlife, also known as the netherworld, world, or the hereafter, is located. Some teachings say it is above the mountains or across the sea. Well, this claims it lies underground, within the very earth itself. Here on the mountain, it is said to lie within the water, implying a close link between water and death. Pillars living within the reliquaries could, or would be in a place close to death, but would go on living. Perhaps it was the special reliquaries that allowed them to evade death and continue living frozen in time. It is thought that perpetuating these pillars allowed those close to death to live longer lives. In a sense, it was believed that proximity to the death helped develop a resistance to it. What? Oh, hey, there's the first cassette. It was a cassette with a notepad. The label has been left blank. Ren. Well, something is making noises. Because apparently that makes you more resistant to death, I guess. I mean, I guess you're not wrong. The old saying of uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, I guess. One of the people listed in Hisoka's missing persons file, Hisoka was asked to fi find her by Fuyuhi Himono, who later committed suicide. According to Fuyuhi, Maruka was last seen near Mount Hikami. 
Haruka goes into the same school as Fuyuhi. She was also often seen getting fortune. Her fortune told in Hisoka's shop. She never met Yuri. He's a kind and timid girl, easily influenced by others. He only started coming to the shop because of her friends. After attempting suicide with a group of her friends, only she and Fuyuhi survived. We're up on an hour, so I'm going to stop here, but I'm probably just going to continue recording on to the next episode. So anyways, bye-bye!